Hello and welcome to Pure Experiences Online Satsang. This satsang is an opportunity for everybody to meet and discuss the spiritual topics. And we also do the Path of Knowledge program from here. So today we are going to start with two tests. Not one, but two. And they are of Satya and Purnima. So I would like to know if they are present in the satsang. Can we start? Yes, Guruji. This is Purnima. We can start. Yes, Guruji, Satya. Okay, very good. So, we are going to start with Satya first. And you will get 10 questions. If you score 50% or more, you will be sent to the step number 4 of the program. After that, we'll do the same for Purnima. After that, there will be a little bit of discussion on the questions. So, we'll take everybody else's questions, if any, after the test, both the tests. So here are Satya's question. Take your time and answer carefully. Okay, first question. Uh, what causes ignorance? Ignorance is caused by uh, blind beliefs, uh, indoctrinations, conditioning, uh, and uh, by society, parents, all the wrong beliefs, old traditions, and so on. Where is knowledge? Knowledge is the interrelation among experiences. So it is in the memory, actually. Memory itself is an illusion. Uh, so knowledge is also memory. It's just an ability to uh, interrelate experiences. It's a, it's a mental ability. Knowledge can destroy mental suffering, but not bodily suffering. Why? Uh, body, mind, uh, when knowledge arises, uh, the knowledge is that uh, uh, one's true nature. Uh, the knowledge is that of knowing one's true nature. When uh, one knows uh, the true nature and that I am the experiencer, the attachment to the body mind uh, goes. So uh, the mental suffering will not be there, but uh, bodily suffering, body, uh, it, the body. Um, it is a program. It is like a robot. It goes on its own. The it it uh, when the body was born, it came with some karmic impressions, and it will go through that. Uh, uh, it has to it has to uh, live according to the program. Who knows the knower? Knower cannot be known. If, uh, if uh, there is someone who knows the knower, then the person who knows the knower will become the knower. That is the experiencer. The knower cannot be known. Experiencer resides in a separate dimension, not in this world. True or false? Uh, it is not true because uh, all experiences appear in the experiencer, in the background of the experiencer. So there is no dimension or, dimension or anything. Everything is just one experiencer. This experience is nothing but the existence. There is only one existence. And everything happens uh, here and now. So there is no, uh, and nothing is separate. There's no other dimension. Every day, new forms appear in the existence. Then is it right to say that existence is all already whole and complete. Everything, all the forms appear in the existence. That itself is safe. Uh, it is not outside the existence. All there is is the existence. Existence is already whole and complete. Existence is empty. It is of no quality. Uh, it is eternal, infinite, uh, non-temporal, uh, timeless, Etc. So it is whole and complete. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be removed. Uh, true, false, right, wrong. Everything. There, there is no nothing outside uh, of the existence. All that is is existence. Whatever is, whether it's negative or positive, everything is existence. Whether anything appear, not appear, everything is in existence. So what, whether something appears or not, uh, it makes no difference. Everything is existence only. It's already whole and complete. Nothing can be removed from it. It's non-substantial. 
experiences are ever changing then why are the person and the world so stable uh because uh uh the changing uh the patterns are changing very slowly in such a way that it is not uh, it, it gives uh, an appearance that experiences are stable which state remains uh which state remains when all other states come and go uh the background of all states is the fourth state turiya state uh it is not really a state but we can call it a state that remains uh as a background for all that comes and goes all states that comes and goes which part of the existence is not explained by the model of the illusion the model of the illusion is only for the illusion uh so it is for the experience it this model itself is to satisfy the intellect and to understand what experience is the nature of experience and all that and to know that uh, everything that appears is an illusion that is the purpose of the model of illusion it is for the experience for the appearances uh the part that is not explained is existence has two aspects two parts one is experiencer and uh, the other is experience uh ex- existence is experiencing itself through the experiencer so it is experiencer which is existence itself uh uh which is uh, which is which is not explained which cannot be explained it cannot be it is unknowable uh it cannot be explained it is beyond the reach uh, of the mind it is beyond the reach of the intellect uh next what makes it the illusion so beautiful and captivating i would say i would say it is the immense potential uh it is a change that makes the illusion so beautiful and captivating the changing patterns uh the immense potential the immense uh, patterns and the senses limiting to make them meaningful uh you know to make it more meaningful the memory all these uh, are part of the process and that makes it more beautiful and captivating and uh, uh that is what i think i may be wrong here uh that's it guruji thank you very good very nice very good effort by satya and you get 6 out of 10 which is a very satisfactory score but it is not outstanding so anyway you are pass and you reach the step number 4 of experimentations and uh, now we move on to purnima's test you will also get 10 yes. questions same rules so these are purnima's questions hey mam guru ji thank you for this opportunity i'll take 2 minutes guru ji yes guru ji i'll start i'll take the first question later on i'll start with uh, the second question will knowing too much cause insanity no my answer is uh, no knowing too much cannot cause uh, insanity insanity is uh, the inability to coherently um, interrelate the knowledge it is uh, it is uh, it is lack of knowledge and uh, lack of the uh, of proper interrelation between the experiences so knowledge cannot uh, cause ins- insanity insanity is a uh, one of the waking states a lower uh, waking state so uh, that is also an illusion the third question truth truth cannot be experienced and knowledge happens via experience then how will we know the truth on the path of truth can be experienced uh what comes to our uh, 
direct experience is considered as truth. However, on the path of knowledge, uh, whatever truth, that is the true essence, is we come to the conclusion of the true essence by way of negation. And uh, the uh, we come to the conclusion that I am the experience. I am the experiencer. But the experiencer, it is, it is the knowledge that we get. The experiencer cannot be known. It, it can only, uh, we can only be the experiencer. Now, uh, how will we know the truth? Truth is always by uh, direct experience and by logic. Here, uh, we know the truth by way of logic, by uh, uh, inference, by discrimination, by uh, classification. We try to know the truth by logic. Fourth one, emptiness causes existence. Establish this via logic. So we have uh, uh, existence is emptiness. It is all that is. And it is uh, mm, infinite. It is complete. It is uh, non-substantial. All experiences, both uh, existence has two parts, the experiencer and the experience. Now, experience uh, is illusion and experience cannot be known. Again, by the uh, process of negation, we come to that conclusion. Now, experiencer is also empty. So, existence, when there, when there is nothing coming out, uh, when the existence itself is empty, uh, everything else, the experiences are also empty. There is um, nothing, there is nothing out there. All that is, is here and now. It, is, it just is. So uh, by that logic, we say that existence is empty. But emptiness does not cause existence. That is the sentence I think here is wrong. Emptiness causes existence. No, there is no cause for existence. Fifth question. Is it true that simply knowing what you are will liberate you? Uh, Guruji, I think here knowledge will remove the ignorance. And uh, the realization that I am the experiencer happens. That is the end of seeking. However, uh, to be in that awareness uh, is important because after having the knowledge, one may go back to the same old uh, ways of life. So it's important that one uh, listens, abides, and contemplates to uh, reach the stage of liberation. If the sense, now the sixth question, if the senses lie, how can they be a source of direct experience and hence knowledge? Senses are a tool or uh, they can be considered as um, pinhole cameras which relay or transform or transmit the signals. Now signals are uh, coming from the wide vast uh, existence. These are channeled through the senses and they uh, reach the memory and uh, there they are compared with the previous uh, memories and uh, the change is identified and experience happens. So nothing, uh, the senses are also, however, nothing, none of these are uh, true. The memory, the senses, vibration, everything is an illusion. And knowledge, 
whatever we acquire by this uh, through these illusion is also illusory knowledge however it is all required for survival and hence uh, we consider that in survival knowledge we consider that as knowledge for survival seventh question how can senses create vibrations via which we perceive when senses themselves are patterns of vibrations how can senses create vibration no the uh, senses don't create vibrations the vibrations are created it's and uh, uh, vibrations are created by the immense potential and uh, the immense potential of the existence now even these vibrations senses memory these are all concepts there is nothing out there in uh, actuality what is there is just the potential the potential of the existence to change and that gives an experience so uh, senses don't create vibrations it is just all vibration senses they are all uh, simply but um, illusions which appear which just appear and uh, what we are sensing is only all all the that which is in the memory however this is all a concept eighth question how do destructive processes destroy vibrations in cycles again the destructive processes and the constructive processes are a uh, concept uh, by the mind to understand this uh, illusion the illusion uh, of uh, existence actually there is nothing that is getting destroyed or created it only appears and since this is happening all the illusions are happening in cycles uh, we tend to we tend to feel that there is uh, destruction and uh, creation uh, actu in actuality there is nothing that is happening uh, this is just these are just the processes are uh, just concepts ninth question existence knows itself and existence is also the experience so experience knows itself true or false existence knows itself and existence is also the experience so experience knows itself yeah this is uh, true as well as false the entire uh, process of the existence experience and uh, experiencer it is the existence trying to know itself via the experiencer um uh via the experience by the ex by the experiencer so uh, it is true and then uh, everything in existence is true as well as false therefore uh, i would like to say it is true and false and it is uh, if i say not true it is not false also but this um, this thing is this entire uh, existence or the experiencing is uh, um, the coming together of the experiencer and the existence Uh, and the experience and existence is trying to know itself that is true does evolution happen in steps or is it gradual evolution happening in steps again is an appearance there is uh, there is no evolution or dissolution actually it appears to be evolving everything this existence is here and now and it is just one dynamic presence it is it is it, it is at this in this moment now coming back to the first question guru ji what is the role of intuition in gaining knowledge mm, yes i think there is a, a small role 
uh, for the intuition and uh, probably that is the um, that is how uh, one feels one uh, has this urge this intuition can be considered as the urge to for knowledge the urge to uh, liberate to get liberated from this suffering so uh, it is this intuition that guides one per one into uh, to find to search a guru and uh, uh, follow a path of uh, uh, gaining knowledge yes guruji i think that is it thank you very good again very very good attempt by purnima and you get 5.5 out of 10 which is a slightly lower side but still you have the basic knowledge and you can do the experiments you are pass so i know these questions today were somewhat difficult because they all came from somewhere else i did not think them anyhow the performance was very good both uh, purnima and satya so congratulations both of you are in the step number 4 uh, and you will need to send the weekly reports and we'll observe you for 3 months and that is your training for uh, the practice the practice needs to continue lifelong but this 3 months are special so now we are going to go through the questions and answers once more and uh, some of the answers i'll invite the opinions of people who are in satsang as usual so we'll start with satya's questions first what causes ignorance and she got 0.5 half marks because she told that society parents newspapers whatever okay now satya is saying lack of knowledge that is the definition of ignorance ignorance is defined as lack of knowledge or presence of beliefs and all but we are asking for cause so there is a very simple answer here that yes all these factors are there but why are they effective in creating the ignorance out of innocence because the person lacks the critical thinking logic and intelligence if these are present nobody will be able to affect you nobody will be able to impose their ignorance on you whether it is society religious institutions gurus or your family will you listen to them if you had this intelligence to find out the truth for yourself they can keep saying whatever they are saying they can keep producing million videos but you will not be affected by that indoctrination so <laughs> that causes ignorance because an average person is not born with this kind of intelligence only a guru can teach whom to trust whom not to trust and only on the path of knowledge we give you the means of knowledge in all other paths it's blind faith so always mention this thing that in the cause is very natural that we are not born with this judgment it has to be learned and that is why no knowledge is possible without a guru because guru has done all this already he has done all the mistakes already he knows the answer okay number 2 where is knowledge correct answer so we'll skip it everybody knows where is knowledge number 3 knowledge can destroy mental suffering but not bodily suffering why and satya got zero so i would like to ask this thing in satsang because our claim is that knowledge causes total destruction of suffering end of suffering but is that true will the pain in the body diseases in the body or anything in the body <laughs> will it go away simply knowing you are emptiness will it end the bodily suffering and why she got zero although her attempt was very good in fact many people they come in uh, spiritual field because there is a belief that <laughs> their bodies will become very good so that is why yoga and all these practices are taken up which are which were actually spiritual practices anjali saying knowledge doesn't destroy suffering it destroys the one who is suffering because there is nobody to suffer it's an illusion very good answer see there is already nobody who is suffering but there is suffering <laughs> this is true that it is an illusion but it is still there nobody wants this illusion isn't it there is nobody 
but there is a desire to be free from this illusory suffering that is what we are talking about so will the knowledge destroy this although there is nobody will the knowledge destroy the bodily suffering can you guess think suffering is mental and body goes through physical pain yes your your um, answer is half correct that uh, there is pain but it cannot be called suffering men very few people know this so we'll discuss this in a minute graham is saying no one to suffer but the body mind still experiences pain yes suffering is different from pain this must be understood by all the seekers an ordinary person ignorant person for that person suffering is equal to pain pain is suffering suffering is pain even this happens to ignorant people that their mental condition actually is reflected as bodily diseases pains if you do not differentiate if you are not in awareness your mind will cause actual pain or actual disease which then becomes a cause of pain everybody knows this i think everybody has experienced this thing rajit is saying illusion or body continues to appear even if after knowing it is an illusion and that is right it will continue to appear it will continue to function as it is functioning all the pain and pleasure will be there same with the mind but now it is seen as illusion and this knowledge actually reduces the suffering i don't think it will go away but it reduces it as long as there is body there will be activity of the body vritti and pain is one of the activity and it is a signaling mechanism which simply signals the mind the brain that something is wrong in the body that's all it is it is not a suffering although it feels very bad yes i know sanjay is saying body is subject to pain in the interest of survival very good answer yes to see it as a suffering is then wrong knowledge or you you can say ignorance it is there it is necessary although it is not desired and this not desiring is the suffering although it is totally natu- natural to not desire so very tricky situation <laughs> here keshav is saying when it is said that knowledge destroys suffering it means that knowledge lifts illusion of suffering so after knowledge is gained there is awareness about detachment from ego or body while going through all states very good answer yes i was expecting this kind of answer that uh, see if somebody insults you somebody betrays you somebody hates you you are going to feel the mental pain there will be bad feeling there will be bad emotion can you avoid that only if you are a rock or a robot you won't get it otherwise you'll get it so knowledge does not end the activity or the state which is natural when knowledge detaches yourself from what whatever is happening like graham said now the identification shifts from the witness of suffering not the one undergoing the suffering it is not happening to anybody because there is nobody so it is happening but it is not happening to anybody like anjali said this alone gives you a peace and a strength to endure it so all those people who are coming here in the hope that the suffering will be destroyed please go somewhere else because no this is not true knowledge will prepare you for that assault to tolerate these states of the body and the mind rideshwari saying bodily pain will continue due to the physical cycle mental suffering will stop yes sometimes in shortcut short form we say that look the mind will stop worrying about this suffering business although the emotional layer and the physical layer will continue to function and we should not stop it also that is unnatural they these functions are there for some good reason we are very lucky to get this kind of machine <laughs> that has this kind of features what happens i'll tell you the reality now these babas and these sadhus and whoever you know tantrics they display some kind of powers that look i am putting needles through my mouth or my <laughs> sword through my mouth nose and i am not suffering look i am sitting in uh, minus 10 degree snow in himalayas i am not suffering and some people will walk on the fire and so on you see so these uh, what can i say you know showmen <laughs> they are simply making a display of their powers they cause this kind of hope in people ordinary people 
that <laughs> look he knows something which i don't know and that, that can stop all the suffering or there are people they keep smiling in front of even criminals a person who is torturing them and they sit there and smile and other people they wonder why this is happening why this person is not affected at all and they come to know that this is a spiritual person on this path that path and they run after that to become like that now i am not saying that it is not possible in illusion everything is possible but knowledge will not do that knowledge will simply make you rise above all these things suffering is there okay <laughs> is not there pleasure is there very good this is what will be done by knowledge so knowledge is nothing to do with all these miracles you see i am not saying nobody should do the miracles they are they can do whatever they want to do i am not saying nobody should do the healing they can do whatever they want it's all allowed only thing is that a seeker should not hold this kind of ignorance in their mind that spirituality is the solution of every suffering or spirituality will end the natural phenomena it will make you resistant or it will make you so strong that probably it won't even matter to you if something is paining in the body it is dying or somebody is saying something to you and you have a, some negative emotion it won't matter but it will be there its effect will be very less then how to end this body suffering you end the body that is the final answer why did you come here if you don't want this kind of positive negative kind of experience which this life is don't come here no body <laughs> no pain although there will be another kind of suffering which is mentioned in the scriptures i forgot about what is that but at least there is some solution to your pain skillful ninja is saying how not to come here you need liberation for that and how to get the liberation first you need to walk on a path under the guidance of a guru find out a suitable path for yourself spiritual path and follow the instruction of the guru who is teaching that path reach the liberation the point of liberation mukti and the human birth will stop so it looks like that you are just starting you are at the starting point so first you need to find out whether it really happens or not is there something called liberation or not so start searching seeking i wish there was a medicine or there was a formula or a mantra that okay do this no birth for you but unfortunately it is not like this path of knowledge is very easy <laughs> path of knowledge says that you are not born you were never born and you will never be born that is the end of suffering actually this realization is the end of all suffering but i think my experience is very few people are ready for this kind of teaching they want to get rid of physical pain and they want to get rid of the mental suffering and then they will think about the brahman and atman this is the 90% of people not people seekers people they don't have any idea <laughs> anyway long answer here but i i thought it was important so we discussed it realizing i don't know why i came here a mistake yes <laughs> now you know you see knowing this much is good enough why i came here there has to be some stupid reason for that you know unfulfilled desires and so on but it is very wise to know that it was a mistake there are better ways to exist so let's go forward and everybody should think about this matter of suffering who knows the knower and she got full marks here sometimes you do not use the word knower we use the word experiencer because we differentiate between the experience and the knowledge so knowledge is simply a special kind of experience anyhow let's go forward experiencer resides in a separate dimension not in this world true or false again full marks she said everything is here and now yes that's that is the right answer so why is there a belief that experiencer is not in the world somewhere else again ignorance only everything is right here right now and and we can say reverse actually that all there is right here right now is the experiencer and the world is not to be found anywhere we we are not sure about whether there is world or not it is a dream but we are very much sure that experiencer is here so reverse of the blind belief that the world is always there and the experiencer oh there is something fuzzy thing going on in my head in the brain 
would it is probably in some other dimension <laughs> so people cook up all these beliefs when they hear all this garbage of dimensions and what not but the knowledge is exactly opposite of the belief you will never find the world all you will find is yourself which is always here and now so very good answer by satya so whenever you hear these things that i am in some other dimension and you should ask for the definition of the word tell me the definition of the word dimension and you will find that 99% of people they don't know the definition they are simply repeating because it sounds like knowledge <laughs> some deep word okay number 6 every day new forms appear in the existence then is it right to say that existence is already whole and complete what this question is saying is that look every day something new comes which was not there before so how can the existence which was there yesterday was whole because you know some new came, thing came here so her answer was very good actually that she said timeless existence it is whole and complete and nothing can be removed and nothing can be added but still she got only half mark because it is not addressing the belief which this question is saying so i want to ask this question in the satsang you see things are taken away from the existence every day and things are added in the existence every day isn't this your direct experience then how can we say nothing can be removed nothing can be added keshav is saying time itself is in the existence and not the vice versa yes probably that's what satya told that it is all here and now and timeless causeless so how can we say what is the ignorance here are the forms appearing every day are they getting destroyed every day is existence uh, augmenting and reducing itself in never ending cycle because when you see it as a direct experience it will look like this rudeshwari saying appearances and disappearances are all illusions yes that is right but one illusion came today another illusion went away isn't this change in the existence so illusion one illusion appeared that means something was added that means it was not whole this one illusion was absent before and same way i remove one illusion today that means the existence is reduced it is not whole now because this one illusion is absent from the existence now which i removed or which automatically gets removed so very logical how come you are saying it is whole and complete everything is uh, getting added and removed from it and who knows countless things are not present in the existence okay madhavi is saying time is an illusion yes that's what keshav said and uh, nitya is saying the forms appearing or disappearing are happening within existence that is also true how do you de- you define the wholeness and completeness of it why do we say nothing can be added skillful is saying we perceive shapes according to our sanskar vrittis one of many possibility we see i suppose yes we we see it is all mind created yes and there is only possibility yes but still is it whole and complete satya said i thought my questions were easy apparently not no <laughs> all these 20 questions are very very difficult sanjay is saying existence is infinite and adding or removing still keeps existence infinite very good answer yes graham is saying it's eternal outside of time it all exists and unfolding and change is perfect yes change is the word correct word nothing is appearing nothing is disappearing it is changing now satya will be <laughs> slapping her head why didn't i say that nothing is appearing nothing is disappearing i think somebody said this yes rudeshwari said this that they are illusions sweet is saying removing and adding is being witness in existence so nothing is happening in the truth the yes, same thing in different language yes good nitya saying waves appearing disappearing within the ocean ocean is same yes the essence remains the same can you add the essence in the existence can you remove the essence from the existence no and the rest is emptiness appearing as something or other thing why do we say it is whole and complete because anything at all can appear and anything at all will disappear this is the law that which appears will go away but that does not mean that it is reducing the existence in some way right so we can take uh, an example of uh, sand on the beach have you seen these sand boxes like this we use in 
software engineering a lot that we run some programs in sandboxes we do not actually run them in the wild because who knows what they can do they can crash the entire network or machine sometimes so there there are sandboxes and you can uh, uh, build anything from that sand you can build this house or a sculpture anything at all in that sand so was the sand reduced when the house was broken and remade into something else or when the house appeared from the sand was the sand increased in some way i mean is that logical to say that the sandbox is increasing decreasing and something is being added now something is appearing something is disappearing but nothing is actually happening the whole is whole it is whole the sandbox is whole no matter what appears no matter what goes away i know it is very difficult to understand these things but this is the answer according to me at least this is my understanding but there can be other answers who knows because this is a difficult question it is very easy to simply repeat after the guru say everything is whole and complete and everybody says yes it is whole and complete but i think nobody thinks about these things you should contemplate a question why do we have satsang not to sit with closed eyes this is not satsang of some other path here the mind and the intelligence should be very active okay let's go forward experiences are ever changing but why are the person and the world are so stable so she got half marks again but uh, there is very simple answer to this which i'll give you that this is the process of stabilization which we discussed in the uh, program in very detail the illusion of stability is caused although nothing is stable everything is changing this our mind has a very beautiful ability to make the things look same when there are small changes so she got 5 uh, i mean 0.5 here because she said they are changing very slowly yes that is one reason that it appears so stable because some things are so durable that they last longer than human lifetime mountains rivers and whatever you say so the planets the stars the moons they are so long living that gives us a uh, illusion of stability but everything is going everything is disappearing it's a matter of time what about the person the person is very interesting thing although you change every day but even after 10 years 20 years you say i am the same person not only you the people who know you they also say oh this is my relative this is same never changes <laughs> i tried but he never changes so this is a special thing the person it is its stability is most important for survival so special tricks are used to keep it same every day not by disallowing the change by incorporating the change into this concept of a person see when you grow your hair long you are the same person you cut your hair you are the same person so this change is now incorporated in the database that this person has this quality long hair this person short hair same person person is not changing and the hair is changing hair are changing so it is like changing clothes the person is a concept which remains fixed and other things are added and removed from it including the body so special care is taken that the person never changes and then you can check the other layers like the emotions or the memories of that person special care is taken that even after a lot of change it is the illusion is maintained you you will know why this is needed this is absolutely necessary for survival illusion of stability there is a process that is called stabilization i forgot the actual term actually in the program if somebody can remind me but it is an illusion very useful nothing is stable actually so let's go further which state remains when all other states come and go and i think she said turya so i gave her 0.5 marks so why was why why did i cut 0.5 mark can somebody tell me i want to ask this in satsang which state remains when all other states come and go turya is a very good answer is a traditional answer but is anybody in turya right now <laughs> i doubt it turya is also not permanent you see it is not there some day it will come but there is no guarantee if it if something came it will go this is the rule here angelic non duality is there a state called non duality 
Sometimes we say the state of the existence is non-duality, non-dual. Satya is saying dissolved. <clears throat> this is very tricky word, dissolved. Because everything is already dissolved. So all emptiness, potential, illusion, what not. We cannot say that there is something. So yes, the dissolved state is always there. But we cannot say that it's a state of mind. Because when we say state, it is always a state of mind. Not of existence or experiencer. or Because these things do not have any state. Sanjay is saying, sleeping is the original state in which all state appear and disappear. I can give you 0.5 also. Although, if all other state appear, they cloud the sleeping state. We will never call it sleep state if some other state is appearing there. It's a very technical thing now. You see, she was right. that These questions are very difficult. Rideshwari is saying for Turiya. No, no, we do not use experiencer for Turiya. Turiya is simply awareness in all states. Turiya will not stop coming and going of states. Remember this thing. They will all come and go. The cyclic nature of states will not stop. Only thing is, they will come and go in complete awareness. That is why it is not called a state. Sometimes we say Turiya is the fourth state. Then you will see again disclaimer below that. No, no, it's not a state. We simply call it like this. It has become a convention to say that it's Turiya, fourth. But uh, nothing like this. It is simply states with a added quality on it of awareness. So Keshav is saying all states are there all the time. Only the activity of the state goes up and down. That is right. But uh, what this question is asking, which will which state will remain? So probably Keshav is saying all states are already there. They remain. But the question is saying will which state will remain constant? So the answer is, uh, you see, very easy that there is no state like this. All states are outcome of vibration. There is a reason they are cyclic. That is because vibration. And so all of them will go. No state will remain. So all these very very beautiful answers like sleep is the only stable state. No, no, no. These are all metaphorical things. Poetry. Turiya and all. No, no, no. no it's not even a state. Rajid is saying all states are of memory. So experiencing is not a state. Sometimes we say state of experiencing is always there. Sahaj Samadhi is always there. But uh, technically speaking, state is all, always a state of mind. If that thing is always there, we cannot call it state. Stateless state. So we should again go back to the definition of the word state. Collection of uh, activities. Isn't it? A state is simply a collection of activities where some activities are dominant. Although the activities do not never stop, like he said. But uh, some of them dominate and that creates the state out of that collection of activities. This is the understanding. This is how it is told in the program. So if it is activity only, <laughs> it will never remain. So it is saying all states are always there. States are of the mind. The witness of them is always there. Exactly. States are also there. They are of the mind. And the witness is the only thing that never goes, which is the experiencer. This is knowledge. This is as per the evidence. So I think the correct answer was that, you know, this question is wrong. Okay, next question. Which part of the existence is not explained by the model of the illusion? And she got full marks, although I could not hear properly. But uh, she said there is this experience aspect which is explained. But there is another aspect of the existence, which is the experiencer. And it cannot be explained by any model. Probably that was the answer. So I gave her full marks. And uh, then we are so unlucky that we cannot explain it. But the good news is, it does not need any explanation. It is self-illumined. It is light itself. It, you cannot throw light on it using a model. So impossible actually. It is the most fundamental. So it does not need any model. Anyway, we will not discuss it further. You can do it yourself. Number 10. What makes the illusion so beautiful and cap captivating? So she said probably I am wrong. And yes, that answer was wrong. So we uh, will again discuss it briefly so anybody any idea <laughs> why is the illusion so beautiful captivating because if it were not captivating you would not be here you came here because it has some attraction isn't it now what is the path of knowledge saying about this thing she said probably remember that it is changing that's why it's beautiful is it like death is a change is any normal person going to call death as beautiful or you lo lost your job let us say change <laughs> that is not a beautiful event. So what makes it beautiful? 
Purnima is saying out of necessity existence is beautiful. It is perfect, yes. And uh, there is a synonym of perfection which is called beauty. But we are not talking about existence. We are talking about illusion. Some people say no, no, existence is illusion. No, no, that is, forget about that now. Non-duality. The illusion as defined in the duality. Keshav is saying illusion is perceived as beautiful and captivating by the senses which are part of the illusion. It is self-serving mechanism for survival and evolution. <laughs> Very good answer, yes. Full marks to Keshav. It is simply an illusion. Beauty is another illusion. They're not talking about the perfection and the beauty of the existence. That which, up, which is appearing. Siddhant is saying it's neither beautiful nor ugly. Yes, right answer. Again, nothing is beautiful in the illusion and nothing is ugly also. Yes, question is wrong. <laughs> I told you very, very difficult questions today. I think you know this thing. I think Satya also knows this thing. But the concept of beauty, ugliness, right, wrong, ethical, unethical, mind created. Mind makes it beautiful. When there is a need, like Keshav said, when it is needed, <laughs> it is made beautiful. If it is not needed, if it is not good for your survival, it is shown as ugly, simple. Now, there will be long philosophical debate about these things. You know, there is already. But look at a circle. Circle is so beautiful. Why is circle so important for survival? It's not important. Look at mathematics. Look at music. Is music necessary for survival or evolution? Many people will say, no, the humans can survive nicely without music. You know, animals are surviving very nicely. So why is music beautiful? Now, the, now this question becomes difficult. Path of knowledge ends here that, okay, everything is mind created. Don't even think about beauty and illusion, uh, beauty and ugliness. That is the end of knowledge, but not the end of debate. The debate is very long. There is an inherent sense of beauty in humans. So in my blog article or probably there is some video somewhere or podcast where we talk about universal beauty and subjective beauty. And this is your homework. Buy the book published by Anjali and read it. <laughs> Advertising. All questions are there. All answers are there actually. The answers which are not found in your program are also there. Okay. This is the discussion on the Satya's question, questions. I, I know it is taking a little bit long so we will go quickly now. Purnima's question. Question number one. What is the role of intuition in gaining knowledge? So that answer was wrong. I'm not going to discuss this thing more because everybody knows, everybody knows that the means of knowledge are only two, experience and logic. Intuition is not listed even in the traditional means of knowledge where the scriptures and guru is, appears. Nobody talks about intuitions, dreams or the subtle states, non-physical experiences. Nobody has given any weight to them. Please think about this, Purnima ji. Not needed. Intuition is not needed. Direct experience and ordinary logic is enough for knowledge. What knowledge you will get from intuition? Sometimes you will get something which is of Maya, the illusion. And that is the subject of Tantra. There it is somewhat important. That knowledge which, which comes without thinking, without you having any memory of it, without your senses perceiving anything. That will be called intuition. There is a source of it also, but totally unimportant on the path of knowledge. Whatever you want to know is right here, right now in front of you. No magical ability is needed. Satya Singh, your blog is mind-blowing. Yes, because it was mind-blowing, I had to write all that. It's not ordinary. So Now you know these things are coming from above. That's why they are so transforming. Let's go. Next question. Will knowing too much call, cause insanity? And she got half marks here because she said, no, it will not cause insanity. But uh, she could not explain why, why it will not cause insanity. Have you seen all these people who keep studying and all you know, half insane? So there is this belief in the society that if you study too much, if you know too much, your behavior will become abnormal. And I'll tell you why is that? <laughs> because uh, majority is uh, ignorant. And whatever majority does is called normal behavior. So obviously somebody who knows something, his behavior changes and then it will be called insanity, abnormal. So this is a belief among ignorant people. 
the knowledgeable people wise people they say look the knowledge removes insanity the knowledge is the cure of insanity but from the point of view in the eyes of ignorant people the one who has knowledge is insane check it out it's like this <laughs> everybody is in reverse reverse gear in your society number 3 truth cannot be experienced and knowledge happens by experience then how will we know the truth so if she got complete marks yes uh, the truth is not known by experience the falseness is negated by experience this is the method and uh, you don't need to know the truth you can be the truth there is nothing to know in the truth number 4 exist- uh, emptiness causes existence establish this via logic so again she got full marks although the logic is only one line which actually she she said it that emptiness and existence are one thing if they are one the one cannot cause itself there is no cause of existence so why why is this question wrong because most of the questions are wrong today because uh, somebody thinks that probably the emptiness comes before whatever exists and what they are saying is they are thinking that existence is an experience of some kind so probably the the fundamental thing is emptiness and then it is causing something which is called existence this is what some people are going to think who who have not studied with that sincerity so <laughs> they will think like this but uh, what is the truth the existence itself is emptiness the quality less existence is emptiness number 5 is it true that simply knowing what uh, you are will liberate you she said something and she got 0.5 marks and she said no probably there are more things to be done after knowing something like this i cannot recall now but it was not a very convincing answer so the answer i'll give it to you that uh, simply knowing yourself liberates you but not actually because the knowledge is that there was no bondage this is the knowledge you will get that there is no bondage it was never there so will liberation happen if there is no bondage no will you remain bound even after knowing no think about it <laughs> it's very tricky question isn't it simply knowing simply destroys the concept of liberation don't even think about it the knowledge says like this stop thinking about it liberation there is no such thing see the, the speciality of the path of knowledge is it will not give you anything not even liberation why because you don't need it it will take away this need <laughs> to be liberated see how powerful it is some other path can offer you liberation and make you work like a donkey for that and when you get it you know that you know i still have a body i still have a mind and so on <laughs> there is no end the brahman will never disappear with with its illusion so it is very wise to know that there is no need to be liberated i am already liberated that is the, that is the last thing you can say about liberation and then forget about it number 6 if the senses lie how can they be a source of direct experience hence knowledge and purnima got zero here because the answer was not good enough so i want to ask this in the satsang you see in the definition of the direct experience the experience which is right here right now coming through the senses not any imagine imagination not which you read in the book not not which something somebody said this is not called direct experience right now right here whatever you are experiencing so how how can that which is coming from the senses be called knowledge if it is all illusion the answer is simple but i know purnima is saying i feel i need to go through the course all over again feeling like a fresh student now yes highly recommended every time you listen to this thing all the videos and the program you will come to know something which you missed before highly recommended see i have done this whole of my life i am still doing it isn't it the satsang is nothing but an opportunity to go through it all again and every time uh, there is something new <laughs> something very very important comes up sometimes so everybody should go through the videos at least the videos which are about the basic knowledge probably from number 20 to number uh, i am sorry number 10 to number 20 the middle portion because the first part is simply about the path of knowledge what is truth there and what is means of knowledge and what is ignorance and the last part is about the illusion that is also important but not that but the fundamentals because it can look 
எனக்கு வெரி கான்ட்ரடிக்ட்ரி கான்ட்ரவர்ஷியல் தட் யூ டோல் தட் டைரெக்ட் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் கம் ஃப்ரம் சென்சஸ் ஓகே ஐ பில்ட் மை ஆல் நாலேஜ் ஃப்ரம் தேர் தென் தென் யூ கோ அஹெட் அண்ட் சே தட் சென்சஸ் ஆர் ஆல் இல்யூஷன் தி ப்ரொவைட் ஆன்லி இல்யூஷன் இட்ஸ் கான்ட்ரடிக்ஷன் ஓகே மெனி இஸ் சேங் ஒன் தான் ரிமூவ் த அதர் தான் வெரி குட் ப்ராப்ளி எவ்ரிபடி இஸ் ஹாப்பி வித் தட் ஆன்சர் நாட் டூ ஐ நீட் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் கேஷவ் இஸ் சேங் with the prism of critical thinking direct experience can separate illusion from what it is what is yes you are right but rajit has the correct word there is only negative knowledge so rajit gets 100% here this was the answer see simple but still you will need to think about it there is no contradiction knowledge is defined as negative knowledge like when we classify the knowledge in the first part of the program we say these are the kinds of knowledge then i say look the positive knowledge is useless in the path of knowledge the negative knowledge is very useful so what the senses are doing they are providing you the positive knowledge actually but we reverse it we find out the truth of it and then we remove it like moni said without this there is no knowledge without without this purification process of the mind the pure mind has nothing it has no positive knowledge no negative knowledge actually negative knowledge is same as not having anything not having any knowledge a knowing agnostic state is the pure mind now whatever is needed for day to day life will be taken as positive and will be thrown out when its job is over you still remain pure yes the senses provide positive knowledge and uh, we know using the intellect what is the truth not this not this <laughs> negative so think about it yes purnima needs to go through contemplation at least if not all the videos contemplate on your notes the notes you have written the contemplation is nothing Sim- simply asking the seven questions again this is contemplation convince yourself number 7 how can senses create vibrations why we should perceive when senses themselves are patterns of vibrations so this question was tricky but it did not fool purnima this time she correctly said that no the vibrations are not created the question is assuming that senses are creating the vibration no they are transforming the vibration so yes it is perfectly possible for one vibration to transform another vibration it is possible yes memory only number 8 how do destructive processes destroy vibrations in cycles so here she got point 5 but i'll tell you the answer because we have very less time that uh, the vibrations are not destroyed just like they are not created they are not destroyed so destructive processes are simply and the process which uh, converts a complex pattern to a simple pattern that is the definition of destructive processes nothing is actually destroyed so that's why she got point 5 because probably she said something like this a disappearance of the form is not destruction very few people know this thing usually we think that something has disappeared It means it is destroyed this is the common language but no it is only a change everything is still there that that thing that remains will be called vibrations it only changes form yes no destruction happens why because no creation happens never happened number 9 existence knows itself and existence also the experience so experience knows itself true or false and uh, the answer was wrong no marks were given because yes very very confusing question it is testing your knowledge of non duality see in this question the duality and non duality are mixed and the logic is given as if it is very nice logic isn't it look at the question so nicely framed as if it is so logical you know the basic mistake here is mixing of duality and non duality see we say existence knows itself as an experience illusory experience this thing is said in non dual um you can say level of non duality remember the level of knowledge levels of knowledge levels of truth so the experience word comes only in duality when the existence is broken down into experience and the experiencer there you, sh- you should never say that the experience is experiencing <laughs> is meaningless in duality the experiencer is experiencing the experiencer is taking on the experiences that is the definition of the experiencer isn't it so when this kind of mistake is made although it looks very logical that yes he said existence is both experience and experiencer so why can't the experience 
<laughs> also witness itself is completely garbage this is completely meaningless statement is it it's not applicable at the level of non duality there is no experience so it cannot witness anything there is only existence the non dual brahman is forever in this state of witnessing timeless and not a state you see you can only use negative words the emptiness which is not anything is witnessing which is not anything <laughs> now you you can send your intelligence on vacation here because the intelligence does not work here the logic does not work here so i know this question is designed for failure nobody can answer this question so number 10 does evolution happen in steps or is it gradual and she got full marks because she said no evolution is happening it's all illusion and the illusion can happen in steps if the illusion wants and it can happen gradually if it wants and that is all will be seen sometimes there is a big step sometimes for millions of years nothing happens it all remains the same and all these things are happening at the same time so good answer but yes you can write one book on this question what is happening <laughs> how it happens and why it is illusion and if there is no evolution why there is struggle for uh, progress even the spiritual person is trying to progress fully knowing i am brahman we are proceeding forward so play it can be seen as a play and you can play slowly who who cares whether is fast or slow or you can take a leap don't want human birth now so this is a very long discussion on the questions and answer answers hopefully it was beneficial for everybody so i used to say this thing in satsang a lot that as long as you guys are asking questions it is very nice very good as soon as i ask a question you will feel like completely ignorant person like she said i feel like a fresher so it is always better that you guys ask the question <laughs> because as soon as i start asking all your beliefs all your knowledge all your confidence will fall down it will be gone so that is why i say those who do not appear in exam they cannot be called seekers on the path of knowledge they are not gyanis the gyani is the one who is shaken by the knowledge who is shaken by their own ignorance that i am nothing <laughs> this is the only knowledge isn't it i am nothing i am nobody the knowledge makes you humble and so questioning is very important keep questioning this is contemplation your exam is nothing but a big contemplation so some people think it is trouble that's why they don't take it they don't want this trouble of contemplation yes guru is saying you know something he comes in like re- broken record he repeats everything <laughs> that is not path of knowledge you need to do the hard work here not the guru the guru will come and break down everything your knowledge your life your education everything will be destroyed by the guru satya is saying it takes great courage to appear for the test there is always the feeling of not knowing yes but if you appear you will change forever this is what i have seen the next big change will come in your life when you start teaching these things those who are ready for that they will experience this very beautiful change that now this fear will be gone from you simply because you are in a position of a teacher the answers will come to you right now you struggle yes but there will be reversal so this this is a good milestone actually this is a very important milestone in this program that you come to know that there is a lot to know purnima saying it's only by your grace that i have been able to do whatever i could you are doing great actually those who are doing the program they are actually on the path so those who are appearing in the exams and all they are already successful don't worry about the marks you get don't worry about that the, the questions are always designed so that it is it is difficult to answer they are not designed so that you get the answers right so simply passing this step is good performance the real failure is not appearing in the exam and the biggest failure is not even taking the program but can we force people to do that no there must be very deep burning desire in them to go through this agni pariksha isn't it so you are successful nothing to worry and uh, keep evaluating yourself like this do i really know or simply i heard it 
and why did i say the teaching will transform you because you know there we come to know that i know so little i cannot explain a simple thing there you will come to know so like when you jump in the swimming pool you know how to swim if you don't even jump you will never know same thing jump into question answer jump into the exams in the program in the satsang and in the teaching you will know how to swim yes you will never know 100% there will be some questions which nobody can answer because the path of knowledge is not really about knowing a lot it is about uh, the bliss that is the absence of wrong notions if you are convinced that you know i don't have anything in me no impurity left in me and then your intellect says look you don't know this you don't know that you cannot answer then it's all okay it's not really necessary to answer each and every question as long as you are in a blissful state so i think is good time to end today's satsang and congratulations to satya and purnima very well done very good and i'll see you everyone in the next satsang thank you everybody for attending today's satsang